Good afternoon, everybody. Good Friday afternoon. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is the new Double Shot show that comes your way every weekday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Mike Tomlin is not telling you who QB1 is Sunday night. Not that you don't already know, but he's doing this for whatever reason. Um, I am, but I'm just going to, you know, keep that in house. But uh, I thought he was sharp. I thought Justin was sharp as well. I thought we had a highly productive week from both guys and, and from the unit as a whole. Mike, is a scenario still in play where you could use both quarterbacks on Sunday? Certainly. I know, um, you know, assistants make suggestions, you make decisions. How much input does Arthur have on these situations, just given that he's been game planning with Justin for six weeks? I wear the decisions. Anyone else? Have you seen Justin kind of respond this week with just things kind of in motion and, and things potentially changing for Sunday? It's been a good week for him. Uh, he's been locked in and focused. I mean, he can do this however he wants, right? He's the head coach. He doesn't have to tell anybody anything. But I think there's something a little bit more to this. Listen to me when I say this, okay? One of the things that I've taken a lot of pride in over the course of my career is that I'll take a stance on something after gathering some information. I'll process additional information and maybe morph that stance into something else. This week over on the South side to me has been fascinating because you've seen all the fuss and the fretting and everything else, a lot of fretting here about the switch from Justin Fields to Russell Wilson. And we're all talking about that. We're all focused on that. My guess is that somewhere in New Jersey, the Jets and their relatively inexperienced coaching staff are doing the same thing. If I'm Arthur Smith, I'm not giving them anything at all aligned with what this thought process might be. You know what I'm doing? I'm running. And I'm running again. And I'm running yet again. The reason for this, well, there's actually a few of them. One is that the Jets don't have many good players, but they do have Sauce Gardner, and they do have a pretty deep group of corners. The one thing that Jets have been good at, and I can't believe I'm saying anything positive about them, is that they haven't given up a whole lot of passing yards. They've always been effective. They've always been guys who can get things done and hold you to under 300 yards. You don't see them getting gashed through the air. All right? So work with that. Now, go to your offensive line. You know you're going to have struggles there. You don't have to wonder about that. You're not going to be surprised by anything pleasantly. By the end of Sunday night, you're not going to go, wow, that's the line. These guys really did it. It's not going to happen. Okay, you have Ryan McCollum at center for the first time in his life. You have, uh, who's it? Mason McCormick at right guard, okay? You have... Broderick Jones, who's given up five sacks already this season at right tackle. Broderick, who froze on a play. You are not going to get the kind of line play that you want. Unless you just tell them to run block. It's the one thing that all of them can do. It's the simplest thing that any of them can do. You just say, see that guy in front of you? Just Move him just a little bit, or you don't even have to move him. Just angle him a certain way. Put yourself between where he is and where your runner is or where your runner's desired hole is. Do that. Pretty, pretty routine stuff. If the Jets are setting up so that they can have one of their big interception, takeaway, pass defense kind of games, they're going to get gashed. They're going to get gashed on the ground. That's the difference here. When I look at this game and this matchup and I see Najee Harris running the way he is, coming off arguably the best game of his career. I know he's had higher rushing totals, but I'd never been more impressed with Najee's running than I was last week. Jalen Warren's finally back in the fold. I don't think you're going to see Cordero Patterson, but you have Jalen back. You have your two guys. You go with them. You go with your... Darnell Washington over here and your Pat Fryermuth over here. And you don't worry about who WR2 and WR3 are. You just don't worry about it. You just go at them. And Russ, in turn, 
he becomes something of a game manager. That's not an insult. That's just talking about the way that they would need to approach this particular game. So all those criticisms that I had this week about the timing, why would you do it now when Russ is going to get sacked, when Russ is going to get thrown around? Why would you do it now? Why would you do it now? Maybe you're doing it now because the coaching staff knows they're not going to pass much anyway. Mm Mm-hmm. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. Joined now by Chris Halleck, who's doing a terrible job of getting aboard the moving train. (laughs) He had to do it. Do you hear the train back there behind the Steelers facility? What's going on, Chris? (laughs) What's going on? If it sounds like I'm shouting, it's because I have this very gigantic locomotive that I think Roman Wilson's trying to hop on right now. No, no, all the moving train jokes. Hey, they either get them or they don't, right? Let's talk about Pat Fryermuth. That's my my offensive focal point, maybe even more than the quarterbacks or the running backs or anything else here, because that feels to me like it could be, I don't know, it's election seasons, a swing vote. Imagine <laughs> if imagine if they were to figure out a way to have Fryermuth to have one of those Cincinnati level games against these guys. Can they do that though, Chris? Russ doesn't really throw a lot over the middle. Russ doesn't throw a lot over the middle, but there are ways that you can still get Russ to throw to the middle of the field. Obviously, rolling him out of the pocket is one way to do it. Um, obviously, him improvising is another way for him to do it. Uh, but also, Pat Fryermuth can be utilized again. You know, I keep you know stressing this in the play action game. You know, th- there are different ways where he can run either the the intermediate route or he can be the the guy in the flat. You know, regardless of what what concept they're calling, he is still a guy that can be an option there and. I do think Russ, I mean, you look through Russ's career, he's typically had a tight end to throw to, and I think he's going to want to utilize a guy like Pat. And, you know, I think if if we're trying to trust a quarterback to do a better job of getting the tight end involved, Russ might be the guy to do it. Now, of course, you can have all of the other concerns about Russell Wilson, and those might be valid at this point in his career. But, yes, they do need to get Pat Frymuth more involved, and maybe that's one of the many reasons why Russ is going to be starting this game. Well, what about the other way around, though? What yeah. about Fryermuth helping Russ get involved? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, if you know he's not going to have a lot of time back there, and he won't, I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. Okay, this line is not going to make you go all right by Sunday night. It's just not. So you're going to have to work around it. You're going to have to release the football quickly. You're going to have to run quick routes. You're going to have to make really quick decisions. What's quicker than hey, where's 88? Boom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think that's one thing that's really been missing because the one thing that we have seen from Pat Fryermuth throughout his career so far is that he is very good at finding soft spots, soft spots, soft spots, easy for me to say, in zone coverage. And he can, you know, find those places to sit down and, and you know, even if it's a quick little five-yard hitch, you know, if you could do something like that on, on first down, I mean, that's better than what they're doing right now, you know, than running the ball on first and ten and end up with no. second and nine or second and eight. So how about, you know, shoot, man, I understand it wasn't the Pat last week, but, you know, first play, they go back, they drop back, Justin checks it down to Najee, and then he ends up turning around and running and getting a first down. Why can't they do a little bit more of that? Some rhythm some rhythm passing, and maybe that'll help get things going, open things up for the, for the running game too. Now there's also this, and you and I saw a ton of this in Latrobe. In fact, I, I once joked with Pat while we were out there about, are you going to run anything other than – out routes, <laughs> okay, or <laughs> through the whole season because that's all they had him doing. It was off to the left, off to the right, which are not conventional tight end routes. It's not what you think of when you think of a tight end. My feeling was that they were doing that in large part because of Russ, meaning that was when it was expected that Russ would be the quarterback. Now, we have not seen that anywhere near as much in game settings, but again, Russ wasn't the quarterback. 
So maybe another way to get Pat involved, and similarly, another way to make sure that when Russ does his inevitable rolling to the left or rolling to the right is to make sure that he's got 88 in his sights. Do you know what I'm saying here? Yeah, and I do think that Pat could end up being a, like a security blanket of sorts for Russ. You know, whenever whenever there's a, a bailout, you know, if he's looking, okay, well, we're, yeah, like like you're saying, I think when all else fails, you know, I think that was one thing that made, uh, you know, Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown so good is that when Ben got to the point of, oh, crap, when all else fails, where's 84? You know, and, uh, yeah, and so it might be a similar situation. Or, you know, obviously Ben for the longest time, where's with 83? Heath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. do that with Heath Miller too. So, you know, it, it, this could be a situation. And, again, you know, Russ has typically had a tight end to throw to, and he's utilized that throughout his career. So I, I, get, I do think that – this could be, you know, a, a chance for Pat to become more of a weapon in this offense, and I do think that no matter who the quarterback is, you need to see more of Pat. You know, you looking to. at the looking at the number of routes that he's ran versus the amount of targets he's gotten, especially in play action, it's not been nearly enough, especially for a team that really doesn't have a legitimate second wide receiver, as we've been talking about pretty much since. Deontay Johnson was traded. No, but they do have a second tight end. And through this entire segment, I can feel everybody who's watching this going, Darnell, throw it to Darnell, throw it to Darnell. (laughs) Darnell Washington, when he makes a catch, is a formidable figure, to say the least. (laughs) You imagine being the secondary dude who says, oh, seriously? I'm (laughs) I'm supposed to tackle this? What am I? What am I doing? I'm not paid this much. But when you see him do these things and you see him hurdle someone and you go, what a fantabulous weapon this is. What actually is Darnell right now as a receiver? I know he's made, no pun intended, uh, leaps when it comes to his ability to catch the ball, turn and go compared to where he was as a rookie. But is he ready, Chris, in your mind for, you know, the next level to be a regular target? I actually think so, and now on the on the level that that Pat Fryermuth, you know, is going to get or should get, no, you know, n- not not anything like that, but more than what we saw with the Zach Gentry, yeah, absolutely. And one reason why is because just the game last week, I I think you might have heard me say it several times. Darnell is wide open. Like it was just in the press box. Yeah, yeah. He was doing that the whole game. I was just like, Darnell is wide open. Like, guys, he d- says this almost as much as he says play action. Just FYI. <laughs> I mean, but but seriously, like like I I remember I think it was even one 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 time when Justin hit Pat Fryermuth and it yep. was a completion and it's fine. But I, I like as the play was developing, I'm like, there's nobody by Darnell, nobody. No. And he threw it to Pat, completed first down, great, but. Man, with the room that Darnell had, if he would have caught that pass and turned around, and he would have started to get some he- like a head full of steam, like again, it's the same thing. Like, who's gonna want to get in front of that guy? I, and what did I and, and what did I say to you when you pointed out that Washington was was wide open? I said I think he picked the right guy. I <laughs> I, I just want to see I I just want to see Fryermuth get more involved, not for Fryermuth's sake, not for Pat's sake. I yeah. think he's exhibited to everybody that he's a total team player. He'll take zero catches on zero targets if he contributes his his portion to a win Mm -hmm. but at the same time it's just you do all this you know you it's not a matter of building him up they they paid him they did everything and then and then you're not even using them and you're throwing to you know deep ball to darnell and another one to connor hayward and whatever with all due respect no you know i I just i want to see this get going here and if there is going to be a passing game I, I want to see it go through the tight ends. Last thing I have for you, Chris, I'm of the belief that the Steelers are going to run, run, and do running more into the running, okay? Yeah. <laughs> to the point where I can't even construct a sentence. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of running. What about George? Well, George, I mean, he he did go up against Sauce Gardner, you know, a couple of years ago in his rookie year when, when the Jets uh, were in town uh, for that game. That was obviously Kenny Pickett's debut when he took over in the second half. Um so he's he's not unfamiliar with having to go up against him. I do think it's going to be a big challenge for him, not only because this, you know, regardless of Mike Tomlin not officially naming a starter, this will be Russell Wilson's first game. George Pickens is going up against one of the best cornerbacks in the league. This has been, now granted, three games. The Jets have played some pretty terrible quarterbacks. They've also, you know, coming off a game in which they faced Josh Allen. So 
they have this is a really really good pass defense really really good corners I, I I'm not saying George can't be involved but I'm wary to say something like oh this is gonna be a breakout game for George or something like that just because this pass defense is so so good yeah I suspect we're not gonna we're not gonna be hearing his name called very much uh, just based on all of this stuff here but it sure would be nice if they were to find a way to pull that off when we come back j1q Safety is a habit. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different. Help prevent gun accidents, misuse, and theft. Keep firearms safe and secure when not in use. For safe storage options, visit projectchildsafe.org. Time now for today's J1Q, and it comes from right here in the city. DK, this is John from Shadyside, and my J1Q is... Do you think that Tomlin is just playing mind tricks with an inexperienced interim coach preparing for his first road game on a short week? Even if Tomlin has no intention of making a switch at QB, I could see him engaging in a little gamesmanship. What do you think? Tomlin is always engaging in gamesmanship. He never in any context or setting, probably outside of his own home, thinks about anything other than winning the game that's being played Sunday. So everything that you hear from him, all of the various machinations that occur over the course of the week, all of that, all of that is aimed at winning the game Sunday. It doesn't mean he's always right. doesn't mean he always does it smartly. It just means that's the objective. So if he's looking across the way, as you just did, and sees that Jeff Ulbrich is – you know, brand new because Robert Sala just got fired. They promoted their defensive coordinator. He knows that Ulbrich is a defensive mind, and he wants to do something, anything, to throw Ulbrich and the rest of that staff off. He wants them to at least be thinking that there's a possibility that the Steelers could come running out of the tunnel with Justin Fields either starting or maybe even just Fields getting some snaps, maybe fields just coming on in certain situations. Uh, fourth and one. How about, I don't know, third and five at the goal line. Uh, like what happened the other day in Las Vegas where you say, listen, Justin's going to roll to his left. If he doesn't like what he sees, just tuck and run. Nobody's going to beat him to the pylon. Nobody. And guess what? Somebody had a beat on him and still didn't beat him there. That's what he wants them thinking about. That's what he wants them to be spending at least some of their limited hours and understand that coaches go like 17, 18 hours a day this time of year. He wants them to waste some of that time because you know what? Everything I just described here actually is a possibility. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody checking out the new Daily Shot show. A reminder that it's here. Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back with another one of these after the first of the two New Jersey games.